2017 championship race. The boys' champion has been crowned from Percival, Virginia. And now a chance to a crown champion on the girls' side. As we have mentioned several times, Manlius, the uh, team to beat, our defending champion, winners of 10 out of the last 11. Last team to take home the championship, not named Manlius, was Wyzetta, and they are in the field as well. And not just Manlius, but of the 13 NX NXNs that we've had, 12 have been won by New York teams. We also had Connecticut one year and also Hilton another. So 12 of the 13 from the state of New York. Lined up and ready to go. This is the girls championship race for NXN 2017. Final opportunity for all of you watching on the webcast to eye in on either a team that you are specifically cheering for. Just get a sense of the uh, group of 200 girls, the best in the country, who are all here today to challenge this course at Glendevere, see what's left of the uh, solid footing, thanks to the boys' race that uh, preceded theirs just a, about an hour ago. These are kind of the, the interminable final moments uh, made worse a little bit by the fact that it's 45 degrees and raining. And they're wearing tank tops. Underway 2017 NXN go, Girls go. Championship Race. Breaking five. They down that Breaking main five. straight away and we'll funnel into the course here. Drummers have begun their work at the start line as they begin their mad dash for that first turn. I think it'll be interesting to note both Wyzetta and North Naperville, two teams that we, we expect to contend for a podium, uh, both say that, that the way they want to approach the race is to lay back and, and come on late. Um, it'll be curious, I'll be curious to see those team scores at the first mile as we see Caitlin Tui immediately out to the front. Well, very different start to the uh, girls race than we saw with the boys and we had that one Middlesex runner out there early on, but to kind of lead her to the lead. Yeah, she, she's, I mean, she's immediately putting her stamp on the race. I think it's it's the way she's run all year. She's she's going to come with the with the strategy that that got her this far. And I think uh, the interesting question here, I, I believe, it's, is that uh, London Colbreth there? It's in Colbreth second place? in second, 12 last year, the Texas 5A state champion. And the interesting question, perhaps, will be how, if if she can keep it close, how will Tui respond? But it, it looks as though that gap may already be growing. Yeah, it's just very impressive. This early into the race, how she's already separating herself against some some really all-time talent right here. Again, 10 3 2 model in second, and she's being dropped quickly at this point in time. That's stunning. Look at that. Well, that and after seeing stunning. that course record of the New York Federation Cup, I mean, just everyone's sort of putting her in sort of rarefied air at this point in her career. No, definitely. You know, she's already shown that st st stats-wise, she is what we call, quote, unquote, off the charts. She's already there. And as a sophomore, that's just something that is really head-turning. I mean, I, I, I don't think anyone's putting her in that rarefied air. I think she's put herself there with her performances. You just can't deny how how dominant those those wins have been in those times. and. I mean, regardless of what happens in this race or in the future, she's already had uh, you know, some of the greatest performances, you'd say, in high school cross-country history. We take a look back on the uh, chase pack here. That's uh, Kelsey Camille of Connecticut in, Kinetic in the white, top returning finisher from last year in fifth. She was sick last week at regional, so battling back from 
that illness. Clear, clearly, she feels all right. She's 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 pushing pretty strongly at the head of that front pack. Um, she wants to give herself a, a chance to, to duplicate that finish from last year. You can see two manliest runners in the red there, uh, as we just as the camera pans away. They were kind of leading the main group there. So manliest, as we talked about, they like to go out hard, they like to establish kind of a, a, a stranglehold on the race and, and not let go. Um, I, I think we're going to see that same strategy here today. The question is going to be, as always, uh, can they can they come through in the final half? Um, as they have so many times before. And our webcast doesn't really do this judges justice because we don't have a webcam ISO on Rich Gonzalez, who's been at all of these and has seen a lot of talent over the years. You're, you're shaking your head at certain points here as we just kind of see how this race is currently unfolding. Right, well, you know, no wish in motion. But we're just over three minutes in, and she has gapped some super, super talent so quickly. It is just mind-blowing. We had a chance this year to see some really top-end, those code put all time timers, but they've done it with less competition in their race. Right here, we see Caitlin facing the best of the best and putting them in the way super early. We're now four minutes in, and she has really made the ultimate statement here. There's Caitlin Hart, uh, 221, 18th last year, the two-time Illinois 3A champion, and then Culbreth in the blue, and Camille in the white. And that is the, as you said, the all-star chase pack right now behind Tui. Well, you look at uh, Colbreth and Hart, you're talking about two people who won their region both as freshmen and sophomores, which most years would make you, you know, by far the standout runner in the country. And here, um, you know, there's someone, you know, good, a good bit ahead of them. It, it's interesting to see Camille, she didn't go, she didn't chase quite as hard as Hart and Colbreth did, having raced Tui before, perhaps she kind of knew she just wanted to run her own race. Um, you know, from personal experience, you race someone a few times, they, they do the same thing to you over and over again. You kind of learn, you just have to focus on yourself and and to focus on getting the most out of out of, out of of your own race and, you know, let them do their, their thing and see what's going to happen. Well, and as you look at it, we're not again showing Tui, who is out in the lead, if you're just joining us. She is out by a remarkable, she's gone through her uh, first mile split in 5.06. Just let that one sink in as we look at the uh, second, third, and fourth. And we have now sophomore, junior, sophomore, sophomore is really the, uh, the youngsters are taking lead and control of this race. And even those three now have a great separation between the rest of the field. Right, and those three, the splits 522, those are all very good splits on this course in these conditions right here. But to be 16 seconds behind at the mile in these conditions is just amazing. Brie Oakley in her uh, fantastic performance last year um, in I would say probably slightly better conditions, she came through in I believe 520. Um, and so, you know, 506, that's, that's really laying it out there. <clears throat> um, obviously, she's shown all year that that's, that's the kind of pace she can hold. Um, I mean, obviously, just a fantastic performance to watch. We'll see uh, how she handles it later on in the race. And Colbreth really is that she's, she kind of went for it early, and now she's, she's going to have to mentally regather herself here because she probably came in and said, maybe I can take a run at this, and then she probably reached a point where like, wow, this is really fast. And now she's seen two people she wanted to compete with walk away from her. There are gonna be some athletes coming up on her shoulder and she's really gotta just mentally refocus, maybe reset her goals and focus on, um, you know, battling with those athletes around her and not, not despairing at what's going on right now. So we still look at the leaders. We start to see now the team scores begin to populate through the first split at the mile mark. Manlius with the uh, advantage at 205 points, followed by Vale Valley, Temecula, and Keller out of Texas. North Naperville, I have to add into the top five only because Chris Derrick is on the broadcast and he would take a swing at me if I refused to mention them. Well, you know, you, you got to give them their due. They're in the top five. <laughs> And there they are on the screen now as we uh, go seven deep with Denver and Liverpool. Manly is cer certainly uh, where they would want to be, pretty comfortable margin right now. Still early on in this race, again, the first mile split is where we carry that through. And again, Kinetic, they were the last at large and drew some criticism. They're currently ninth right now, so they're showing well with their opportunity. Ah, validates the championship committee. It's early days yet, Rich. Uh, you can see, I, I believe that's Claire Walters, Manlius' number one runner, is moving up into fourth past Colbreth, 
Um, I couldn't quite catch the bid number of the other New York athlete who was with that trio. Um, but so you, you have Tui out front, you have these two athletes, Hart, the Illinois State champ and the, and the Midwest Regional champ, and then Camille, our top returner from last year. Uh, and then you go back to that group of Colbreth, Walters, and the uh, New York athlete whose bid number we'll try to catch for you. Oh, geez, look at this. You just get a great perspective on that head-on shot as our leader, Caitlin Tui, already up the hill. And and you get a great perspective, too, of, of how hard that hill is because she's moving so quickly, and she, I mean, she nearly came to a stop at the top of it. Some of these athletes who are maybe less accomplished and maybe also went out harder for them in a relative sense, that's kind of where the, your momentum can really get sapped. And if you can run over the top of that hill, you can start making up a lot of ground on people. And Kelsey Camille's now making that effort up the hill. Has gotten herself a little bit of advantage now over Caitlin Hart. And the chase group behind him, as we saw in the boys race, certainly not any of these athletes here near the front out of the individual podium finishes just yet. As uh, the winner on the boys side was able to uh, make a strong surge after running most of the race in force, Aiden Troutner was the winner. But in now full isolated view, you see Caitlin Tui all alone in front now, nine and a half minutes into this race, took control for pretty much the first few hundred yards and literally and figuratively has never looked back from there. She uh, takes uh, full control of this race nearing 10 minutes in. Long stride, that strong arm carriage, just all energy forward. It doesn't look like she's really laboring. It's like a very, very hard tempo run here. Very impressive performance thus far by Camille after that really brutal race last week at, the, at, a, at a regional race, suffering with that illness, finishing 15th. Um, fantastic to see her thus far bouncing back and running really, really strong. I mean, these two athletes, uh, Camille and Hart, are, are well clear of the rest of the field, which I think shows their quality and then even you know, increases the, uh, how impressed we are with, with Caitlin Tui up front. And there is an athlete there uh, in, in fourth, moving up pretty strong. I think that might be Camilla Noe, if I caught it correctly as they were coming up the hill. Um, we'll try to get the confirmation of that on the split, but um, if it is, she was an athlete who, who employed that same strategy at a regional to great effect. Latui slowed down a bit in her second mile. Again, 5.06 on the opening mile, came through in two miles in 10.36.6. So backed off just a little bit, but certainly no need to necessarily keep driving down those, uh, those low five-minute miles. So she's well in control of this race. We see her now back in picture live here on the webcast. Those of you watching on the big screen here at Glendevere Golf Course, that, that second mile is also just, it's much tougher with those two big hills. You have a long kind of drift downhill in the first mile. And I think the second mile is, is predictably much slower. Yeah, the margin now at 30 seconds. The advantage for Caitlin Tui over Kelsey Camille of Kinetic. Came through in two miles and 11.06. Seven seconds behind her, Caitlin Hart out of the Midwest. And then uh, Californian Maria Castillo. Castillo. Maria Castillo, I believe. I think I got a little over my skis there with trying to trying to call it from without too much visual. Um, but she, she looks like she's moving up really well through the field. So I think we could see her really challenge um, perhaps both these podium positions. And Manlius is top runner. Walters in the top five on the individual side as we continue to have runners come across the pad at the two mile mark. We'll have uh, five runners across for each team then be able to populate the team scoreboard for the uh, second split at two miles. You see the advantage Tui by 30 seconds over the rest of the field here in the girls championship race. Two, two young athletes in seventh and eighth there. Uh, Sydney uh, Torvaldson from the Northwest. She's a freshman and then our seventh grader, Lauren Ping was in eighth. Um, Torvaldson went out pretty hard at her regional and, and faded a bit at the end. I, We'll be interesting to see if she can hang on to that top 10 position um, at the at the two mile mark there. 
the wind's also now beginning to pick up a little bit, so that's going to make the challenge even more so in the last mile to try and, from a team standpoint, try and really be there and keep your position or move up for your teammates. You see those scores right now. Manly is still in big command, 81. North Naperville actually moving in, 120 in second. Very interesting. Wow. Vale Valley in third, 143. So Manlius has some company now. This this race I think is a lot tighter than we would have expected. Uh, I'm gonna get let me get punched for saying Naperville again, but North Naperville has moved up tremendously, and that has been that has been their mo all year. Uh, we'll see if they can continue to do so in the third mile. Well, and you looked at some uh, some pretty good uh, tightness between places three through about. Uh, through about seven with uh, less than 90 points. And again, the big difference here is, uh, you know, not where your top two, three runners finish, but where that four and five come through. Now on the uh, board here inside the uh, confines of Glendevere Golf Course and also for you home on the wipe cast, we'll run through both the current leaders and the team scores at the two mile mark. Manley is trying to make it 11 out of the last 12 years. And Caitlin Tui trying to put some uh, New ink in the history book and the record book here at Glendevere out in control in this girls race at 14 minutes in. Well, you talk about how tight the team scores are in that kind of uh, even just two through six range. And in, in a day like today where a lot of people are going to be going backwards in the mud, there's a lot that can still happen in that race. We saw Wyzetta, who we expected to be much higher. They were back in 12th with 290. I think it's still conceivable that they could get under 200 points, which would put them in the top five, but that's that's a lot of ground to make up, and it's hard to know from this perspective how they're doing out there on the course, if they're moving up or going back. So this is Kelsey Camille, who's running alone in second, sort of looking around to see where her next nearest competitor is, but she's now got some good separation, but. Uh, now kind of runners one and two all alone by themselves. You scan the list of the top 10 individuals, the one surprise there, number 213, uh, Mariah Castillo of uh, California. That is a bit of a surprise. She was scanning her state meet. Wouldn't necessarily put her among the top 30 or 40 in the country coming in, and yet now currently she's in fourth. This is clearly, clearly the race of her career. I think she, she moved up incredibly from, from the first mile to the second mile. And maybe she's an athlete who, who ran within herself and just kind of found a rhythm that the rest of the field that she was running with didn't have. So a very interesting uh, team race developing here, particularly in those uh, positions two and three that will end up on the podium here at the conclusion of the race to pick up the trophy. Manlius uh, was in the lead as they were after mile one in mile two. Now their uh, score down to 81 points, a margin of 41 points over North Naperville. The uh, final team score is not to be announced until after the race is concluded. This is Kelsey Camille. And the leader coming up the hill here, and that uh, maybe the first time we saw her at least have some amount of uh, effort shown on her face as she comes over those final two rises now as she comes into the field of view here for our crowd gathered here at Glendevere. And uh, the hand that she's going to get down these final few uh, hundred meters is going to reflect what we've all witnessed here, which is uh, a pretty amazing and dominating performance. Just a sophomore out of New York, coming back from a 13th place finish last year, keeping an eye on the clock. She's going to get well under that 17 minute mark, going to have a new course record here in the process. And another legend born here at NXN, Caitlin Tui. The former course record 1657 by Katie Rainsberger. We saw that go down quite easily, very impressively here by Kaylin Tui, the sophomore from New York. Just fantastic. That's all you can say. Um, I mean, and you look at Kelsey Camille coming through in second place. She has a huge gap on third. This is a, a, a really impressive national class run from her. Uh, unfortunately, there was another one of those out there today that, that was a bit better. But we want to give all due respect to, to Kelsey as she comes through, because this, this is a great run, especially rebounding from that really tough regional race that she had last week. Uh, Camille fifth last year. She'll finish second this year, the NXN 2017 runner-up. 
And Castillo, with the race of her life, she's going to get on the podium here. That's that's two surprise California podiums in, in third place in, in both the boys and the girls race. And then Hart from Illinois comes through in fourth. 1644.8, the official course record time for Caitlin Tui as she wins by a margin of 41 seconds over Camille in 1725.1 as now the rest of the field races to the finish and this will all reflect the uh, champion being crowned for the team race. Manlius with, with two uh, runners through already and we're still mostly in the part of the race where it's mostly individuals so we know that their top two held on really well. There you see on the screen the final results for the girls race. Caitlin Tui delivers a record performance here at NXN 2017 in uh, what we'd call a, a good test of conditions and she runs 1644 in a, a remarkable performance. We'll have her on the dais here in a few minutes to present the trophy for our top three finishers individually and our top three team finishers as well as the rest of the field here on the girls side continues to make their way down the final few meters across the finish line. So winning by 40 seconds here at that margin, 40 seconds over our runner performer. Just another sign of the dominance she's been showing, continuing it when she's been shown all year, taking down some big horse records, but right here the big prize obviously, and she left no, no doubt. If, if I'm counting correctly, I think that North Naperville put in their five before Manlius's five, although Manlius did have a really, really strong one, two, and three. Um, so I think we're, we'll, have to, we'll have to wait for those, those final results to see how that all shook out, but I, I definitely think it was a, a bit tighter of a race at the top than maybe we were expecting. Um, with, I think North Naperville, their, their five, which was their weakness, clearly having a, a really nice day. Now approaching 20 minutes, and we still see a number of four, five, six runners coming in. And again, finishing on empty, that's, that's the theme, the motto here. You see many girls spilled out on the finish line, having given it their all. And the team race is decided by the score of the top five finishers from each of these teams. We'll have those kind of held under lock and key until we bring up the uh, top three teams here for presentations of those awards coming up in just a few minutes. We'll have the top three individual finishers as well for those trophy presentations and uh, kind of marking now the uh, official end to the cross country season at least here in the Northwest with the uh, crowning of a champion at NXN 2017. And uh, what has ended up being sort of the worst conditions of the morning, uh, we swapped between the boys and the girls running first or second in uh, separate years. So the girls had the opportunity to be the, uh, the closers today and maybe got more authentic conditions and uh, maybe not the, the race we saw competitively like we saw on the boys' side, but certainly uh, there'll be a headline value in what we just witnessed by Caitlin Tui. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. But first go back to the course conditions, even though it was very challenging, we didn't see really you know, get word of any spills, what have you. So the footing was pretty good. It was just, it was just challenging, but not to the point where you saw people going down and it could possibly affect a team outcome or what have you. But no, Caitlin Tui again, just, I had not seen her run in person this year and had heard so much about her, read about her, wanted to see it in person. Had a chance to see uh, another individual, Claudia Lane, out on the West Coast who couldn't be here this weekend. Very impressed by her, but on the stats looking at it, it looked like Tui was the better performer on paper, but I wanted to see it in person. And boy, this was tremendously impressive, without a doubt. And then Jamil, you know, a two-time regional champ, another regional champ, Hart, also in the top four. Maria Castillo, the girl from California who was third. When the athletes go ahead and fill their paperwork for NXN, they, they fill out anything else that we need to know. And Mariah was a bit nervous. She put on there, I've never flown on an airplane before. My first time at an airport alone. 
And well, I'm gonna tell you, on the part alone, and she, obviously she got out here, she flew, and she never stopped flying because she went out there and really finished with the vengeance that last mile. She may not need a plane to get home, is what you're saying, right? <laughs> Well, the team's kind of gathering together now as they come back together. The first time they've seen each other since the uh, the start line. That's what he said. And again, we'll uh, hold back the results on the uh, girls' team race until we bring up the top three for their presentations here.